In one point perspective, you learned how to draw things as though viewed from the front side and diminishing to a single vanishing point with converging lines. In two point perspective, you're viewing objects from the front corner rather than the front face and your objects recede towards two vanishing points, two sets of converging lines. To start, you still need a horizon line. You still need vanishing points, except this time you have two and you want them as far apart from each other on the horizon line as possible. The first thing you are going to draw is the corner of the object. So to draw a corner, you're pretty much drawing a straight up and down line and then connecting the top and bottom of that line to one vanishing point and then to the other. Very similar to a one point perspective window, except now it's to two vanishing points. Now we have a front corner. We have the beginnings of two sides of our box. We're going to end those two visible sides with parallel lines, straight up and down, just like our corner. And then we're gonna connect those two lines to the vanishing points as well. The top and bottom of each of them have both already been connected to one vanishing point. Since we are above our horizon line, we're only going to connect the bottom of those lines to the other vanishing points. You can then erase the extra lines. And you have a cube in two point perspective. You can um, use this basis of a cube to draw many other things in one point perspective. So let's draw one below the horizon line. Connect top and bottom to vanishing points. Again, the next thing we do after we have our corner and the beginning of our sides established is to end these sides with parallel lines. And then normally we would then connect the tops of those lines to our vanishing points, but we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to turn this start of a box into a house. So in order to um, make it a house, assumedly with a um, peaked roof, um, we want to get that roof on there. So I'm going to pick one of the sides of my building and I'm going to lightly draw an X through it to find the center. From the center of that X, I'm going to draw a line straight up parallel to my corners, as tall as I want the peak of my roof to be. Then I connect the top of that line to the front corners of the house to give the front side of the roof. From there, I'm going to connect the top of my roof to one of my vanishing points. The way I know which vanishing point to pick is which way the rest of the house is going. The rest of the house is still going to the right, so I'm going to use my right vanishing point to give the top edge of my roof. And then we have a parallel uh, line here. That's the angle of our roof, we want a parallel line to end our roof. That gives you the base structure for a house. We can do other things to our house as well, like add doors and windows. So a door or a window is very much like you would draw one in one point perspective. You're going to pick a side of the building. Let's go with the right side. And you're going to draw a straight up and down line. I'm going to do a door, so I'm going to draw a line straight up and down, parallel to my corner lines, 
all the way to the base of the house. Since it's on the right side of my building, it's going to go to my right vanishing point. And then another straight line down. I have a door. If I wanted to do a window, again, a straight up and down line. You always want to start with the edge of the object window or door uh, closest to the corner, wherever it's placed on the side. The side that's closest to the corner is the line you want to start with. This time my window is on the left side of my building, so I want to go to my left vanishing point. You can also do things like chimneys. So I could draw front corner of my chimney, connect top and bottom to my vanishing point. Notice I'm lining it up but not drawing it all the way. As long as you're lining up with the vanishing point, it's fine if you don't draw the lines all the way there. Again, we want parallel straight up and down lines. And since my chimney is still below my horizon line, I should probably be able to see the top of it. So I'm going to connect the top of my second set of vertical lines to my vanishing point as well. Um, there's other things you can draw in one point perspective. I could put a sidewalk in next to the edge of the house's yard. So if I use my right vanishing point, I can decide how wide the yard is on one side. If I use the left vanishing point, I can decide where to meet up with that for the other side of the yard. I can make a sidewalk that goes along the edge of the yard for the house. Again, I'm connecting with left and right vanishing points. I can um, start by creating the corner of the sidewalk by lining up with vanishing points again. From my left, I'm creating the right boundary. From the right, I'm creating the left boundary. And then from that vanishing point, from my right vanishing point, I can divide the sidewalk on the left side. As I get further back, I'm very slowly going to be decreasing the length of distance between my divides to show that the sidewalk is going off into the distance. Do the same thing for the right side by coming from my left vanishing point. and you can keep going all the way down. You can use the vanishing points to create roadways. You can use it to create the dividing center lines down the roadway. You can use it to create fences. If I wanted a fence to start in a little ways from the sidewalk, I can draw that first post, connect the top and bottom of it to my vanishing points.
I can draw more vertical lines to show divides in the sections of the fence. You could make each of the little sections into pickets. You could make it into chain link. Whatever type of fence you want. You can use it for other vertical things like um, telephone poles or light posts. So if I drew a vertical a set of lines for a telephone pole or a light post. I could decide what angle I want the arm to come out at and the little light. And then I can use that lined up with my vanishing point. Because when I'm going to the left, I'm connecting to my left vanishing point. And using these sort of places where it changes angles, I can plan my other telephone poles and they will diminish into the distance and look correct. I can use two-point perspective to create very, very tall buildings. Buildings, as long as the rules of gravity apply, should always be grounded below the horizon line. You can start with that vertical line, have it cross my horizon line, connect to my vanishing points. can still draw doors on buildings like this. It's on the right side of my building, so I want to connect the top of my door to my right vanishing point. Even though the building is pretty far to the left of the on the left of the page, I'm still connecting to the right vanishing point because it's on the right side of my building. I can make whole sets of windows. Again, these ones are on the right side of my building, so I want to connect to my right vanishing point. Another set of vertical lines to end my windows. Two point perspective allows you to do a lot of things that have to do with um, city design, building design, road layout. You can even use it to do this basic structures of cars. Lots of options with two point perspective. The keys to remember are single vertical line to start your object connecting to both vanishing points, connecting the tops of those lines to the vanishing points unless you're going to build a roof. If you're doing a roof, doing the X through whatever side you want to have the peak of the roof on, drawing the line straight up from there, connecting down to the corners, and then connecting to whatever vanishing point the rest of the building goes towards. 
Everything else is very similar to one point perspective. It all depends on what side of the building it's on. Straight up and down line for the window. It's on the left side of the building. Left vanishing point. That's the basics of two point perspective.